Welcome to Prayer for America and Prayer for the Nations. And today we are going to have a power packed broadcast with special prayer for the United Kingdom. And in just a moment, I'm going to bring on some very special guests from the United Kingdom from Manchester in the north part of England. And we are so delighted that these brothers have joined joined us today, and we trust it will not be the last time. But before I go any further, please, please take a quick moment and press that little share button on your Facebook profile so that your friends, your loved ones can join us together as we pray for the United Kingdom, for the United States of America, and for the nations, as well as for individual needs. But please press share, call your friends, text them, whatever you have to do, message them, tell them the broadcast is on right now. If you haven't subscribed yet to my YouTube channel, please do that. It's free of charge and allow notifications so that every time we're on, you'll get a quick little notification that the broadcast is on. And if you are able to, you can join us right away. Anyway, God richly bless you. Thank you for joining us and welcome. Wow, this is amazing. Uh, look at these wonderful brothers right there in Manchester, England. And we had Brother Andrew Taylor on a couple of weeks ago. However, we had that was the day that Facebook was black, uh, blocked out and we were only able to be on YouTube. I don't know what you did, Brother Andy, that day. But, but Facebook crashed when you came on. Well, it was before you came on anyway, but we were able to then repost it through YouTube. And thank you for being back on here, uh, Reverend Andrew Taylor from Manchester, uh, England. And with him are two very special guests, uh, uh, Pastor Ron Hearn, uh, whom we've known for many years, and his lovely wife, Jenny. And to uh, the other side, you see Reverend Aaron Hornback. Oh, he's a Yank who escaped to the UK. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he is ministering there. But Brother Andrew, I'm going to give the floor to you or the mic to you. Would you say something? And you've invited these wonderful guests and tell us a little bit more about them. And then, we'll, of course, we'll have them share. But thank you, Brother Andy, for being back on here again today with me. Uh, no, it's great, great to be on. Great to see you and uh, Nina. and Great to be a part of the um mission that you have where you're praying across the world not just for america but and the nations uh, and i think that's important as you know we spoke last time and i reminded your viewers of that scripture that says ask of me and i will give the nations as an inheritance uh, for you and that's pretty much one of the things which i want to kind of pick up and run with again uh, today and with that in mind i've got to to my left you're right pastor ron um i i say this all the time i have served under i'm only a young man um, <laughs> however i have served under numerous pastors throughout my life um, i grew up in church and each pastor that i've served under i can highlight their key strengths and the things which have made them stand out in my mind the things which i've taken uh, away from them that have helped me and fashioned me and modeled me and molded me and developed my Christian character. And I can tell you about those who were great preachers, those who were great teachers, those who were great evangelists and all of those things. But I have to say that if you said to me, what's the greatest example of a pastor that you could find? And I would have to point to this man um, because, and Pastor Aaron would say the same, yes. we're both sons in the gospel. I have never served under anybody who has demonstrated what it is to be a pastor like this, this man. And, um, and so I thank God for the privilege that I have had over the years to, to growing up in church as a young boy, listening to him, and then being able to serve him. Uh, as a an associate pastor for for many years 
at Gorton. So I love this man very, very much, uh, very much a father in the gospel. Uh, and hopefully as we share, we'll be able to pinpoint some of the things which I want to share that he has exhibited, demonstrated, lived out and mentored both for myself and Pastor Aaron, that yeah. we're now walking in that. To my right, your left is Pastor Aaron, um, my <laughs> brother. <laughs> Brothers from another mother, we say. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> very, very close. One of my bestest friends in the whole world. Love him to bits. Um, we really are good friends. Mm. Um, our wives often ask us, what are you two talking about? Because <laughs> we're always <laughs> talking. Uh, but great, great man, great man of God, real passionate, came here um, uh, in obedience to God to marry the wife that he has mm -hmm. and uh, as part of mission. Uh, you'll hear a little bit more about him as well. So I'm really excited. Uh, I, I know time is of the essence. So the thing that's on my heart today, I just wanted to challenge your listeners, your viewers, um, today and we live in a world which is in crisis and there's no question about that you would have to be uh, on a different planet if you were, did, were to disagree with me um, but we live in a world that Christ loves Jesus loves the world he loves the people that are in this world mm -hmm. and so one of the challenges I think as we come through the pandemic as we come out of it the other side um, one of my challenges my concerns is I'm asking the question of so many church leaders and it's this is a very very simple question it's a question that we have had over the years how many non-christian friends have you got mm. that's a really really strange thing to be talking about on a Monday uh, on the prayer for America and the nations where we're looking and talking to I'm hopefully broadcasting to many church leaders and those who are in church leadership but I'm asking that question how many non-Christian yeah. friends have you got? Because in the environment that we're in now, yes. we need to reach this world with the message of the gospel. But there's something why I ask that. So I'm just taking you on a little bit of a journey, uh, Walter, if that's okay. <laughs> Please. Please, absolutely. And, so, and, and this is very important, Andy, mm -hmm. that you share that. And, yeah. and people probably see your perspiring because you added some extra lighting there. <laughs> so, I have. I, I have. We, we've got studio lighting in Pastor Ron's uh, office here, but we, we don't have. <laughs> Don't it's, just, it. it's just like people will think that it's really hot in England right now. <laughs> and it's, it's, it's not. It's the Holy, the Holy Spirit. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Amen. But uh, yes, so I want you to share that because it is so important right now. Uh, if, even throughout the pandemic, one of the things that uh, I, I, I think the devil was trying to do is to shut down the church to close the mouth of believers. Uh, and yet it is the time, the period of time when people more than ever need to hear about Jesus. And there are many people who have uh, the spiritual hunger right now. And it's so sad the churches were closed down and, 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 and people recoiled. And yet I, I think you're hitting a very important subject and a very important point. How many unbelievers are we relaying to because people are desperate to hear not about politics or about this or that. They need, they're desperate for answers. People have been shaken up. People are, uh, some people are, uh, feel hopeless, if I could put it that way, and they need to hear of the hope in Jesus Christ. So uh, Andy, please go ahead and share on that. Then we'll hear, uh, and if you could pull up just a little closer here so we can see a little bit, there we go. <laughs> and, and then and then we'll hear from brother, uh, uh, the other uh, brothers here, but go ahead, Andy. Okay, and so this is important and part of my, um, if I was to take you into my uh, private studies, yesterday morning and I'm just reading this before I go to church and it's uh, in Luke chapter 5 uh, we know that Jesus when he calls Matthew and it's interesting because it says later as Jesus left the town he saw a tax collector named Levi sitting at the tax collector's booth now tax collectors they were that you didn't mix with those they were horrible people um, and Jesus says to him follow me and be my disciples 
and it says that Levi, Matthew, got up and followed him immediately straight away. But then he came and he had a banquet for Jesus at his house, um, as, and Jesus was the guest of honour. And, and it says, many of Levi's fellow tax collectors and other guests also ate with them. And here's the, the, the verse, he says, but the Pharisees and their teachers of religious law complain bitterly to Jesus' disciples, why do you eat and drink with such scum? Yeah. And, and I just want to remind us and your yeah. listeners and your leaders who will tap in that Jesus was the friend of sinners. Yeah. And I think we get so insulated in church leadership that we get so caught up in being busy doing church. But if we're not careful, the only people that we meet and socialize with are other pastors, other church leaders. They're people who they, they we get insulated from the world and we get detached. We 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 no longer feel the heartbeat and the pulse of people. And so the reason I, I'm not going to speak too much today because I've got two men here who if I had to if you said to me, well, well, tell me two leaders that you know who demonstrate what it's like to be a friend of sinners, then these two have done that. So Pastor Ron doesn't really want to speak too much, but way back in the uh, nine, late 1990s or early 1990s, we had in the UK a real influx of asylum seekers. It was fairly new. Um, from Afghanistan, from Iraq. If you remember the Iraq war mm -hmm. and, and all of that, and we had people fleeing and it was fairly new to the UK that so many people would come. And then Pastor Ron and Jenny um, felt a passion to open up the church and to go out and to start finding hope and help and homes for people who nobody else wanted to, to be around. Now that's important because in the UK now, you can't go anywhere without a church or a charity or somebody somewhere doing what they pioneered. Now, I don't know anybody who did that before they did. There may well have been, but they set an example to the point where we have people coming to the church who they were down and out vagabonds. We've had people coming from prison. We'd have all sorts of people coming and they would come looking for this man um, and wanting to but they just love being in his church came as they were drug addicts drunkards prisoners escape addicts you name it this man was a, ma a friend of sinners yeah. but I'll, so i know you you can ask him a question and then it's not me talking and then i'm going to explain why i wanted pastor aaron to be here <laughs> Well, pa Pastor Ron, it is so good to see you. It's been a few years since uh, we've mm -hmm. seen you, uh, but we've known you for a number of years. And I do remember the church you pastored in your earlier years. And uh, it uh, it is so wonderful to have you on here today. And, and not only speaking to the UK, but we have folks in the United States, in Canada, in China, in Cuba, in Argentina, in uh, uh, Germany, in different parts of the world, uh, in Nepal and in India, who tune in, some live and some because of the time difference will not see us until later. But... Uh, uh, it is, what would you say to uh, uh, pastors are, uh, that are out there? Uh, what would you say about your outreach to sinners? Well, <clears throat> the, the, only, the only thing I can, I've only read this. May I just reach for it? I think this is the secret of ministry, really. I have, I have a, a daily devotional. and. Um, it's um, it's by uh, Oswald Chambers, in fact, but the, he says it's the key to the missionary's devotion. That's what the heading is. And uh, the text is taken from 3 John verse 7. They went forth for his name's sake. The key to the missionary's devotion is that he is attached to nothing and to no one except the Lord himself. The duty of a faithful missionary or servant 
is to concentrate on keeping his soul completely and continually open to the nature of the Lord Jesus Christ. I think that is the key, isn't it? That we should be in a relationship with Jesus and that should be forthcoming in our movement, in our work for everything to do with Jesus is that he was a friend, as we've just said, a friend of sinners and that very compassion and motivation is ours to the world to outreach everybody, no matter what society they come from, no matter how rich or poor, where we, are, we have that uh, love of Christ through us working and uh, it's just nature, our nature is his nature that we love everybody. Amen. And that's the secret. Of, Amen. Uh, of, of every uh, of our service for Christ, isn't it? Our relationship with Him and Amen. His, His life working through us in demonstrating uh, what we do for Him. Well, it's that... just a joy to listen to Randy speak <laughs> of, of me as he has done because it, 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 it's so human, it makes me so. Uh, humble, I'm humble to hear what he has to say and can't believe it yet. Well, God, every, every bit goes to the glory of God, doesn't it? Um, and it's he, it's him in the end that receives all the glory. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Ron. And um, it, you, it's, it seems like we think sometimes the mission field is in another country. It's someplace across an ocean or across a border. But the mission field, uh, Pastor Aaron, isn't it just right outside our door? Most and welcome, definitely. welcome, Brother Aaron. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> yeah, you, the, 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 the that the mission field is outside of yourself. And uh, it could be in your own home. It can be your next door neighbor. It could be as you're driving down the road. It, it, anywhere you go, wherever you go, Christ goes with you because we are in him and he is in us. John 17 says that. And so wherever we go, he's there. Yeah. And so that's our opportunity. Like what Pastor Ron was saying, it's in our relationship with him. He's enveloped in us so much that we are compelled by him and the power of his spirit uh, and the love of his spirit to reach, to love, to, to show compassion, um, not necessarily to preach, but let our lives do, do the, the, the preaching for us. Now, you are kind of a missionary from America to the UK, are you not? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So... Uh, yeah, I'm a missionary. Missionary called to missions at the age of eight years old. That was the first time I heard God's voice for myself, and I knew it was the Holy Spirit speaking to me. But to the Philippines was the call, and I ended up going to the Philippines while in Bible school. Met my wife. She was a nurse here when we married, and uh, so uh, in finishing university, I came here and been here nearly 20 years. And uh, so the Lord has brought me here um through marriage of the philippines and uh, so yeah i've been a missionary here for 20 years wow wow where are you from originally in the united states if i may ask yeah so i'm from iowa the midwest okay very yeah. good well god works in mysterious ways and i think there is a phenomena that is taking place around the world and sometimes we uh, think missions will be done in a certain pattern, a certain way, and God does things in various ways, in multiple ways. And um, I think that you are one of those examples. But I remember what Brother Andy just said a few moments ago about Pastor Ron's church, that he was taking people in that were coming from other nations. So it used to be we would go to other nations to find foreign people, quote unquote. And now these foreign people are right here, whether it be in the UK or in the United States, and we can find multiple nationality 
piece. And I think there are there is a twofold process here. On one hand, it is a mission field for us believers to evangelize those from other nations who have reached our shores. At the same time, there is another phenomenon that is taking place, and I have seen this especially in Europe, and that is that God has, uh, there are Christians who have come from other nations to European nations seeking a better life, a job, and then they end up starting a church or or uh, God calling them to the ministry. I uh, we we were with uh, uh, Brother Andrew in a church in Coventry, as I recall, an African church. I mean, just on fire for for God, and they were not just reaching the African community in their city, but their desire was, and they were reaching out beyond their ethnicity or their ethnic uh, uh, background. They were mostly from Ghana, if I recall, but they were reaching uh, other people. And I saw that in Spain. We had the opportunity of uh, doing some ministry in Spain. We found Ukrainian and Russian immigrants and, and other immigrants from the former Soviet Union came looking for work and now they've started churches. We were there two years ago. There were, I think, 14 uh, churches, Slavic churches, meaning they speak Ukrainian and Russian, mostly Russian, and they are all over Spain. And initially, they're trying to reach people from their community, but now their young people speak Spanish. They're reaching out to the Spaniards. Uh, we saw that in Holland, speaking with one pastor in Holland. He says the immigrant churches are really evangelizing uh, the, our people. We see that here in America, too. Uh, we see that there is a fire, a zeal for evangelism among the immigrant community, more so sometimes than the native population, if we could put it that way, or those that have been here for a long time were born here. And so God is, is, is working in a, a different type of uh, way than perhaps we thought or imagined, but the mission field, as we have just said, is right outside of us or right outside the door. We don't have to go very far, and, and it's not just going to a foreign land, though God sometimes calls us to do that. I mean, I'm one of those, about 80 nations, but, but here we are. You are in England right now. I'm in California, United States, and yet we're speaking to people in different nations who are watching right now and those that will be watching later. And uh, God has uh, opened up new opportunities via technology like this. Uh, I will be teaching all week next week uh, the Bible school in uh, uh, Armenia. Uh, so um, <laughs> it's, it's it's just amazing. I, I I've uh, I've had I've been preaching in different nations <laughs> by way of this technology, which is uh, quite amazing. But we could have just recoiled and said, "Okay, the doors are closed. COVID came. Let's just you know hide." No, we've got to seek ways of reaching people despite the circumstances, whether through the internet or on a phone call or somehow, some way, we need to keep evangelizing. Isn't that what we're hearing here, Brother Andy? And I want to get back to you. <laughs> it's, it is, and, it, and it's really good. So your timing is excellent. So and the reason is that, um, so we talk about that, and we talk about the nations, and we talk about the world, and we talk about those things, and that's really, really important. But my challenge tonight, because it's evening here, and wherever you are, whatever time zone you're in, to those who are listening in America, those who are listening in um, Cuba, for some reason, your Cuban listeners are on my heart, and there's a reason for that, um, is because we then need to, it's, it's easy to look at the global aspect of mission. When we talk about mission, uh, we tend to see far-flung fields. Yeah. But as Pastor Aaron has already said, then your mission could be your next door neighbor. That could be the person that God's called you to and so I've asked Pastor Aaron to come here because when I ask how many non-Christian friends do you have mm. um, as pastors and as leaders we need to be challenged with this because I'll let Pastor Aaron this is a I'm dropping him right in it now <laughs> but that's because years ago God challenged him mm. with that very question and then he did something which was fairly radical 
as the leader and the senior pastor of a church where he decided to take um, God at his word mm. and get out from the church and go and do something about it. And I'll let him tell you a little bit of that story. And the reason your Cuban friends, I'm speaking, because I know in Cuba you love boxing. Yeah. <laughs> um, and just a couple of weeks ago, Tyson Fury became the new heavyweight champion of the world. The story that Pastor Aaron has to tell had an impact on his life. And when you heard him give thanks to his Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, after that fight, I couldn't help but give God praise because stood next to him was a young man who was impacted by another man who was the subject of what Pastor Aaron, I hope, is going to talk to you about. <laughs> yes, thank you for leading me to uh, talk about. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, so, you know, one of the, one of the most important things for, that I have found that as a pastor, as a minister, um, if you have been around church world so much, you become insular and almost sanitized from the world. So you don't know how to interact with the world that you're in. And, and it's, it's a very uh, daunting situation, I think, that the church is in. How do I interact with a world that, that can go on without me when we, we are the ones who contain the light and life of the world, Jesus Christ? So for myself, about mm -hmm. 10, 10 years ago, I was in severe health situation because of lifestyle. Um, and I used to pray for the weight loss miracle. I was very, very big. Um, a lot of health issues. And one night I said, Lord, I know it's not going to fall off me. I put it there, but can you help me overcome the obstacles in my mind? And, uh, and started in a gym, changed what I was eating, my lifestyle that way. Six months lost weight. But the main thing what we're getting to is that I began to have a different um, uh, place to go rather than church. It was the gym. And if if you knew me, people back home, they know me. I'm the last person you'd expect to be in a gym um, just because I'm more into the arts and all that, singing and music and all that. So here I am, I'm in a gym and, and people come up to me about nine o'clock in the morning, I'm there and they're a bit confused. I've got, we've got this young man, he's in the gym, he's not at work. What does this guy do? Um, and so they began asking the question, so what is it that you do? And I struggled at that moment. I thought, do I tell them that I'm a pastor or what and i remember i went to the changing room real quick and the lord said uh, deny me before man i deny you before the father which is that scripture i went right okay so i just said i'm a pastor uh in a, in a local church and i was expecting rejection but i didn't get rejection I, I i received favor why because before i said that i was building a relationship with people and i wasn't and they realized that once I said I was a pastor, I had no judgment or malice against them. And long story short, then there was a, a man that um, I had been praying for for years to be able to witness to him. He's his daughter. My son went to school together and I'd heard that life had uh, turned for the worse for him. A uh, broken marriage and um, he had tried to commit suicide. And so I was praying for an opportunity to to. Uh, witnessed him about the lord and for two years i prayed and i would meet up with him in different stores and i would just encourage him and uh but i kept praying the lord really put in my heart that it's about to come and he joined the gym that i was at and uh which i thought wow this is going to happen and one morning i got to the gym and lord i didn't know it was the lord i got there early and i was dealing with something i said go into the gym now and i thought i'm not going into the gym Three times the Lord's fine. Finally, I got on the third time to go into the gym. I went in the gym, was in the changing room, and this man walks in. And the Lord said to me, today's the day. And that guy, he looked at me, and he said, I can talk to that man. And so he came to me and said, you're a pastor, right? I said, yes, I'm a pastor. He goes, I can talk to you. My family have told me not to talk to you, to anyone, because they, everyone will think I'm crazy. He said, um, I'm lost. I'm trying to find God. And immediately I said, well... In Revelation, the Bible says, uh, uh, behold, knock on the door. Uh, he stands there and knocks on the door, and he goes, I know what I'm supposed to do. I'm supposed to answer that door. He said, last night I downloaded the Bible onto my, my iPad because I was having these thoughts of suicide once again. And so I downloaded the Bible, and I began reading Revelation, the book of John, and the book of Ezra. And I thought, Ezra? Who reads Ezra? Even I. But a month before that, the Lord put on my heart to read Ezra. 
and I've never really read Ezra. Though I was in Bible school, I kind of like did the quick check, check it off the list that I've read it type of read through. Um, but because I read it, I was able to say to him, do you know what that's about? He said, no, I hadn't a clue. I said, it's a new beginning. And he said, Aaron, you're not going to believe this. I was in Didsbury, which is a, a suburb of uh, Manchester. He said, I was there and at an open air cafe and there these double decker buses went by three of them and every single one of them that I felt something in my head say look at the buses and each one of them said it's a new beginning so God had set him up but if I wasn't there if I wasn't in the in the world if you will if I wasn't in the gym um pumping iron and and doing these classes and cardio stuff with all the, these different people the opportunity for this this man to find Christ would have never happened. But it, it, I think that the key to this is know who you are in Christ. When, what Ron was saying, I'm in relationship with the Lord. If he's for me, who can be against me? And then I go into the world, not thinking it's going to tarnish me, that maybe I might do something better. I might influence the world with some light and life and love that can change the world that I'm in. But if we don't go out and do that, especially as a pastor, and it's so important as a pastor, if, if all you're doing is, is, is tending the sheep, the 99, I was talking to somebody today, she, I mean, she, or last night, um, she said, you know, if we just focus on the 99, we'll never forget that there's one out there. Mm. And that one might be the key to the salvation of many. You never know. So that's, that's where I'm at. And that's what uh, is my heartbeat. Cool. Pastor Aaron, there are people that may have tuned in thinking they tuned in by accident. It is not by accident. Jesus loves you. Jesus wants to transform your life. He wants to change the trajectory of your life. And he loves you. He has loved you with an everlasting love. And Pastor Aaron, would you take a moment and uh, uh, lead those who may not know Jesus but would like to know Jesus? Uh, they've, they've heard this and they've heard that, but there is that emptiness. There's that longing in their heart that you and I know only Jesus can fill. Would you pray for those people? Lead them in a prayer and pray for them right now. Sure, more than willing to. God, I thank you for this opportunity. For those who are joining in who have heard about Jesus or maybe been around church or Christian people and, and have seen that there's something different within them. And, and there is an emptiness. There is this longing for something more. The world does not satisfy. And so many today are realizing it. Lord, you are the one who satisfied. You are the one who brings wholeness. You, you created us to be infused by you. Yes. And so, Lord, I pray for those who are listening now, who are watching, that they in their heart will say, Jesus, I believe that you created me for more than what I am now. Mm -hmm. I pray that because you died for me, mm -hmm. that you would come into my heart as my savior, as my hero, as my champion in my life but also become the Lord of my life, the master of my life, someone that I can submit myself to. Mm. And Lord, I pray that by the power of your spirit, not only do they believe, but they receive the Holy Spirit in their life. And may they realize that it's your work working on them on the, from the inside out, not to be good enough, but you qualify them now as being good enough. Mm. And Lord, I thank you for those who, in their heart have been um searching and may feel that 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 sense that now's the time mm -hmm. god i pray that uh, you begin a new chapter a new book a new life for them i pray in jesus name amen 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 and what yes, Walter, um, yes just, please just just to say um because you know you know i'm the storyteller you know i thought i thought i'd taught pastor aaron a little bit more so he's left some juicy bits out so and, the, and i think this is a word and then a word of encouragement and speaking into the life of people who are listening so just like that young young lad that young man who who pastor aaron met in that gym he spent two years praying and asking god for an opportunity to speak to this this man 
And God never gave him that. But what he didn't know, and I've had them both on stage in a studio like this, giving these, this testimony side by side, what he didn't know is during that two years, the journey that this young this young lad was on, I say young lad, he's actually older, older than, than Pastor, Pastor Aaron, <laughs> um, but he didn't know the journey he was on. Well, that culminated in him, his, his marriage fell apart, everything broke up during this two year period. And yet God did not release um, Pastor Aaron to speak the word of faith to him. Um, but it culminated in him determined to take his life he drove to the most secluded place he could find that nobody ever went to. Yep. He overdosed on the most incredible amounts of um, tablets and, and painkillers and all sorts. And mysteriously to him, even the man that found him doesn't know why he decided to walk down that particular gorge. Non-Christian, he was an ex-policeman, and he found him in his car. He'd been there for almost two days. Uh, about three. Three days. Yeah. How he, we, the, the doctors don't know why he wasn't dead when they found him. And so when he came round, he was section put in a mental institution. When he yeah. came out of that, he gets back into the gym. The first thing he does is go looking for a guy that he knows is a pastor. And what happened that day when he turned up in that car park and he sat there and God said to him, go into the gym. And he says, no, God says to him, go into the gym. He says, no, God says to him again, go into the gym. And he says, OK, because that guy's in that gym looking for this pastor that he thinks has an answer for him. So when he walks in, he says to him, you're a pastor. I need to speak to you now. And that's the thing. So. My word to if you're if you are in the place that that young man is, God has got you in his sights, just like he had with him. God has a plan and a purpose for your life. And I say all of that to show you this. So I don't know if you can see that picture, your your viewers. Yes. Um, yes. Yes. Now that's that's Tyson Fury at the baptismal service of that man that Pastor Aaron led to the Lord. Wow. wow. Okay. So that's the world champion boxer at that baptismal service. Air, Pastor Aaron had the, the joy of, of baptizing that young man. And um, and Tyson Fury was there at the at the poolside. On the front row. Yeah. The front row. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> wow. Wow, wow. What what an what an amazing story. But there are so many things we could get take from this. What is you were praying, you were wanting to witness to this man, and yet that very day that you were supposed to connect with him, you did not want to go do it. And and I think that speaks to something that sometimes God uh, moves us to speak to someone, to deal with someone in the most inopportune moment when we really don't want to do it, but we need to be obedient to the Holy Spirit. Uh, it, it reminds me of an occasion years ago when I was flying um, on a night flight here in the U.S. Uh, it was uh, from, uh, from I, th I think it was from Atlanta, Georgia, flying to the West Coast, and I was tired, had had meetings, and I wanted to just close my eyes and uh, get a few winks, as they say. But the Holy Spirit said, no, you need to speak to the lady next to you. And I said, no, I, you know, I'm tired. I, I, want, I want to rest. Don't I deserve some rest after all that hard work? <laughs> and no, the Holy Spirit says, you speak to her. So I begin a conversation, and uh, she starts getting defensive. She says, uh, well, I've been baptized. I never asked. I never said the word baptism. She says, I've been baptized when I was young or something like that. And then something else. I went to church when I was, you know, a teenager or something. And uh, I just, you know, shared a little bit about the love of Jesus. Well, um, the food came. There was this served meals in those days. <laughs> and, and before uh, eating, I, I, I prayed and I just prayed for her. And, and then as, as the flight continued, she started tearing up 
and I found out she was the wife of a mayor of a city who had known Christ in her earlier life, had fallen away, and, and she was just feeling convicted, but she needed that, and she just broke down before the Lord and, and returned to him. But again, it, it reminds me what you said. No, I'm not going in that gym. I don't feel like it. You know, this is not the day I got to go do something else. So we need to be obedient to God. We don't know that moment when we feel we're tired or that moment we feel that we need to be someplace else. And the Holy Spirit says, go do this. And it is for a reason. There's God's timing, but uh, so important. There are people who are hungry for Jesus around us. And, uh, uh, you know, what's interesting is you, uh, I don't know if you had spoken to him about the Lord before or not, but he knew you were a pastor and he obviously knew it, not just because you had a title of a pastor, but he obviously saw that there was a difference in you from other people, because we could call us a Christian, ourselves a Christian or whatever, but if people do not see that Christ-likeness in us, it's not going to attract them to us. It was that presence of Jesus in you that drew that man to you. He knew that you had something that he yep. needed and he wanted. Is it, would you agree with that, Pastor Aaron? Most definitely. It's something that um, um, I had talked a few months ago um, at the church that we're, we're pioneering at the moment. Looking at the story of the Good Samaritan, when Jesus was asked by the Pharisee, who is my brother? He tells the story of the Good Samaritan. Something very important that I felt the Lord really put in my heart is the, the Levite and the, 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 the Pharisee who passed by, they should have known better what to do. But they were so consumed with their image that they passed by. Mm -hmm. They didn't want to be stained because then that would mean they were unclean. They didn't want to have rumors about them. They didn't want anything. When the one who knew what to do was the one who shouldn't have been able to know what to do, the Good Samaritan. Mm -hmm. And the Good Samaritan not only took the man, but he paid for everything. He made sure that this man who was broken was brought to complete wholeness. And this is, this is the point. People will know what you believe when they encounter you, when they experience you. If you truly are a follower of Jesus Christ and the spirit of God is residing within you, they will know it because they will encounter what spirit you're of. And that, that, that really comes to it. Are, do you have a religious mindset? Are you more concerned about your image? your image before men, your image before God? Or are you actually more concerned about my broken brothers and sisters around me who need somebody to come alongside and take the entire journey to make sure they come to wholeness? Mm -hmm. yeah. That's really what it's about. Because people will, will, will react and, and respond to that which they encounter when they experience you. Amen. I think Pastor Ron is, a, is an example of that, of taking people on that journey. Um, isn't that right, uh, Pastor Ron? Yeah, I, I, I mean, I don't know how much um, time we've got left, but we can, I'm sure we could all say that there are moments in our own lives where notably we've been influenced by God to say a word or ask or not even say a word. They are looking at our lives all the time. Yeah. We are being scrutinized yeah. by people. And um, this particular fellow that I have in mind was working with me um, in a factory when I was a, an engineer. And uh, the, the man had been all around the world in the merchant navy. He had a, a quite a, 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 you know, his background was was very, very um, well. Uh, what we could, what we could say, uh, maybe somebody in the, that he had met in every port, and he had been in the army as well. And here he was working next to me on my left on a lathe. And he, he, he was a man that was um, very into weightlifting. 
and uh, here he was watching me, I suppose, I didn't realize it, but one day he said, what's the difference? What makes you different than all these guys around in this factory? There's something about you mm. that is that, that, that's different. So I was able just to speak to him very gently about the law. And it, to cut a long story short, this man who was, well, I don't know what else he had done in his life, but we don't need to go into it. But the point was, he went into the, one day on the Friday it was, he went into the toilets and he prayed for the first time, maybe, I don't know, but he asked God to do something. That man came, <laughs> he, his eyes were full of tears. He stood by his lathe and was weeping, weeping. I'd not said anything to him. Other people came to me and said, what have you done to Don Ashton? I said, I've not done anything. And that man came to Christ in the, in the whirl of machinery, in, in, the, in the middle of the afternoon on a Friday, and he was changed, completely changed, by the power of God fell on him. He didn't want to smoke anymore. He went home to his wife, who he, he had beaten his wife many, many times. He'd smashed a, a, a cup, a, a ball on her head, broken it over her head, on her head. He, he was violent. That man became as soft as a kitten. Wow. And he was absolutely transformed. He wanted to know when he could go to the church that I was attending at that time. And he became a really solid, wonderful witness for Christ. Hallelujah. Uh, what a transformation. He, 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 the whole factory couldn't believe what had happened to this man and wondered what I had about. <laughs> I said, I, I had not had anything. It wasn't me, it was the power of yeah. Christ Amen. that came down on that factory floor that Amen. Friday afternoon. Wow. And that Amen. man was absolutely transformed. Praise God. What a powerful testimony. And I think this speaks to the fact that we are to preach Christ not just with words, but yes. with our lives. And that is the perfect example. Here we see where this man was noticed that there was something different about Ron. And Pastor Ron had Jesus in his life, but that brought conviction to this man and he came to Christ. Well, that needs to happen more often. If we live more like Jesus, we will see more of that. Um, you know, we have we have prayer needs that have come in from different parts of the world. Uh, Pastor Nathaniel ha in Canada had open heart surgery. It was a, an 11 our procedure, very serious. Uh, they removed a tumor. I never heard of a tumor being in a heart. They had removed, we're going to pray for uh, Pastor Nathaniel. He is a brother to someone who's been on this broadcast many times, Sister Marcy Labaki is her brother, pastor in Canada. Uh, we're going to pray for uh, several other people. There's a praise report we received from Nepal. We prayed for Pastor Ram Chowdhury, who uh, um, was unconscious, was in very bad state. He is well now. We just got that report before the broadcast started. Praise God. Um, we're praying for Kathy's sister, who had a stroke but also needs salvation, she and her husband. Um, we're praying for, um, we have a prayer request to pray for pastors in North India being persecuted um, by Hindus in that region. And we are supporting church plants in that area. They're asking, the pastors are asking for us to pray for them. Um, we have a prayer request for 
Steve uh, and Rosie. Steve and Rosie came down with COVID. Steve is on a ventilator in the hospital, uh, getting better. My understanding, we're going to pray for his complete healing. His wife is at home. She's recovered, but the medication she's been put on has had some uh, um, some effects on her, and uh, we're going to pray for uh, for Rose, uh, and we're praying for Maria, long COVID. So there are other prayer requests, but irregardless of whether or not we mentioned you in these prayer requests, we get requests throughout the day and night. We do pray for those needs, and you can be assured that we will pray if we receive your prayer requests. And so we may not have mentioned you, but God is in God knows your need, and we're going to pray for your needs right now. And uh, you may be in um, Kenya, you may be in Nepal, you may be in India, you may be in China or Cuba, in North America, in Canada or U.S. or Mexico. You know, folks that watch us in Honduras and other places. There is no distance in prayer, and we're going to pray right now uh, for these needs, and I'm going to ask these gentlemen, uh, these pastors to also um, pray, join me in this prayer, and then to lead out as the Lord leads them, because they're aware of needs in the UK and elsewhere, and we know that there are many who are uh, suffering from uh, effects of either COVID or long COVID or something that uh, complications that they've had, but uh, with God, all things are possible. So let's come before the Lord in prayer in, in agreement. Father, in the name that is above every name, the name of Jesus Christ, we come against sickness, we come against disease, and Lord, we lift up these that uh, we I've mentioned Pastor Daniel in Canada. We send your word to him, touch him, heal him, give him full and complete recovery, and let there be no complications, uh, uh, no cancer from this tumor in Jesus' name. Lord, we send your word to Steve, intubated in the hospital. Touch him right now in Jesus' name, and we pray that your resurrection power would infuse his body, expelling every trace of COVID and healing his lungs, making his lungs strong. We pray for his wife, Rosie, at home. Uh, uh, we pray that you would touch her and heal her right now, and that uh, there would be no more uh, bad side effects from the medications that she um, was given. Lord, we pray for complete healing in her body, as well as for the rest of the family, that you would protect them and keep them. Father, we thank you for those that have received healing, but we pray for Maria, that you would heal her of uh, the effects of COVID. We pray for Kathy's sister, um, that you would save her and her husband, and we pray that you would heal her from that stroke she's had. Father, we lift up pastors around the world, missionaries, those who are carrying the gospel of Jesus Christ uh, in places like North India, in places like Afghanistan, Iraq, Iran, uh, Cuba. Father, in China, uh, we lift up the persecuted church, and we pray that you would strengthen them, embolden them, and give them ways to share the gospel where there seems to be a closed door, and yet you open doors. Doors, even as in these testimonies where people came up uh, to Pastor Aaron or came up to Pastor Ron wanting to know Jesus, Lord, put that hunger, put the work in the lives of these who are in need of the gospel, and may they approach Christians, whether they be in Iran or Afghanistan or in China or in Cuba, and may they ask believers, may they ask pastors to minister to them in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Would you, uh, brothers, uh, pray as the Lord leads you, whether it be for healing or for other needs, and we want to pray for, for revival. We always pray for revival in America and in the nations, and we want to have special prayer for the UK folks. Uh, I mean, brothers, as the Lord leads you, would you please pray? Yeah, amen. Well, yeah, and yeah, just before I do, I just um, yeah. I just as we're talking to the church church leaders and those who we're speaking to that i just feel that god is saying um stop looking up 
and start looking around. Yeah. Uh, we spend so much time looking up and we're not looking around at the needs around us and those around us who are crying out for uh, mm. for a reality uh, and to, to touch God. And so, Father, my heart's cry is that we would see the needs around us and Amen. we would be able to speak into those yeah. needs. And Lord, as um, I have the privilege today of having to my left and to my mm. right two men who have witnessed and demonstrated the importance of doing that, looking mm. around, touching the lives around them mm. in their own um, vicinity. And so, Father, uh, I just pray that as we uh, seek you and cry out to you, that our, our heart's mm. cry will be the same cry that you have. May we have that same mantle that just as you were a friend of sinners, may we be yeah. also. Yeah. Ask it, Lord, in your precious name. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. And then I just pray, Lord, for a stirring um, in the hearts of, of uh, those who are followers of Jesus Christ, pastors, missionaries, um, those who are have been new to faith or have been long in the faith, Lord, that they will, will um, take the, those, the steps of faith. Faith without works is dead, and faith has to be active, Lord. And Lord, I pray that you will just stir in their heart that the desire not that you come, but they realize you are in them. Yeah. You, they are your representation. Yeah, yeah. Amen. They are Jesus in the flesh yes. to this, the world that we're in. The world is needing the hands and feet of Jesus to, to come and bring comfort, to bring, to set the prisoners free. Isaiah 61, the ministry of Christ has never stopped. Mm -hmm. So Lord, I pray that a refresh in the hearts yeah. and, 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 and mind and spirit of your church. Amen your ministry that you've called us Amen. to to set the captives free to to see blind eyes open to to mend broken hearts and to to rebuild cities and generations that are long devastated mm. lord that that they grow up to become oaks of righteousness yeah. for the display of your glory in your name's sake lord i pray for those of us who are in ministry the one lord we don't know where we're going to get our next meal we don't know how we're going to pay our next bill Father, I, I think of what Andy was praying about. Lord, may they turn their eyes to those around because you see their need. Yeah, yeah. And Lord, as, as they give of themselves, as any of us do, as the, as the body of Christ, we give of ourselves. You, you are already yeah. answering our need. It's yeah. like the, the, the sun rising on the yeah. horizon. Yeah. <laughs> so you, your, your faithfulness rises upon our needs. Yeah. So Lord, I pray that you help us to, to keep in that focus of faith, that yeah. you see us, you know us, you feed us, you clothe us. All you want us to do is continue to do what you did. Amen. Deny ourselves and reach out for others. Yes. Thank you, Lord, for that in Jesus' Amen. name. Amen, Lord. And so, <clears throat> Lord, we just know that what happens and what can happen, we know that the outpouring of your spirit on the day of Pentecost, we just ask that that will be repeated yeah. in our time, that there will be a fresh outpouring of your spirit upon us all, that we may be equipped to go and tell all the time. You have people that we touch and are influenced, and I pray for a special person just now that comes to mind mm. that Jenny and I have witnessed to recently, Stephen King. We remember his name yeah. before you, Lord, and ask for this mm. particular man. Mm. We ask, Lord, he will find you yes. in all your glory to come to Christ. Yes. He needs you, Lord. He's been here, there, and everywhere, but he needs you. And yes, we Lord. bring him to you, yes. specifically, yes, Stephen Lord. King. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 And Father, we pray for revival in America. We pray for revival in the United Kingdom. Father, your kingdom come, your will be done in our nations and in every nation of the world. Father, we invite your governors, we uh, governance, we invite your intervention, and we pray that the leaders of our nations would truly bow their knees before Jesus and seek his face and seek his guidance and his direction and his blessing. So, Father, we pray for a new 
spiritual awakening in America, in the United Kingdom. And Father, I pray for these brothers that are on with me today that you would bless them and use them. And Pastor Ron, even though you are in age, God still has much for you. And the Lord is not done with you or Sister Jenny. And Father, we thank you for men like these who have trailblaze for others. Father, we speak blessing on Andre. We speak blessing on Aaron. And Lord, we speak blessings on every pastor who is working in the United Kingdom. Use them mightily, O oh God, to reach the nation with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And Father, we pray the same here in America, that you would awaken the church, that we would see not just our need to come closer to you, though that that is the most important, but Lord, the needs around us so that we would begin to minister more than ever before to those that surround us. And Lord God, we thank you that you have given us that precious call of carrying the gospel of Jesus Christ, not only to the nations, but to those around us. And Father, we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, this was so wonderful to have you with us, and uh, we've been getting prayer requests, and we're getting commentary from different parts of the world. Um, we have an SOS. Please, please, please pray for me. Want to live. Please help me. There is a Svetlana. Uh, I'm not sure if she is in Ukraine or in Russia, but we are. We have people watching us in Ukraine right now, and someone wrote us an SOS. Uh, please pray for her. Let's just stop and pray for Svetlana. Father, we do not know where Svetlana is at right now, but she is sending out an SOS asking for prayer. She wants to live. We don't know the condition, but in the name of Jesus Christ, we rebuke death and we speak life into Svetlana. And Lord, we pray that you would visit her right now in Jesus' name. May your resurrection power be extended to her touch her and touch others who may be watching right now, maybe someone who is even considering suicide. In the name of Jesus, we say, no, do not commit suicide. There is life. Jesus offers you life, eternal life. Take that which Jesus offers you. I rebuke that spirit of suicide. I rebuke that spirit of death. Leave in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we pray for the salvation of those that do not know you that may be watching right now or will watch later. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for touching. We thank you that you are healing. I sense that the Lord is touching an arthritic knee and just receive your healing right now. I sense that uh, uh, there is a neck pain that is being healed right now, a shoulder condition. Receive your healing in the name of Jesus Christ. Brothers, any of you sense anything or uh, to pray for, please? Yeah, I'm conscious of time because I know Pastor Aaron's got to take his wife to the hospital. She's a, an emergency nurse on a cancer hospital in, uh, in Manchester. So if he sneaks off off camera, you'll know that. But I just have this, this picture. I pick up the same as you, that there's somebody listening who, who they feel that they've come to the end of their their um, usefulness in life they wonder really and you're a christian as well and you're wondering is it really worth it i would be better off not here and you've heard the testimony from pastor aaron today of somebody who tried to commit suicide but god was in that car kept him alive yeah. you've heard that prophetic word from yeah. um, pastor walter today and that you god is saying no so i'm just speaking life into you i'm speaking wholeness into your mind and I'm just coming against this spirit of suicide, which would try to take away the plans and purposes of God for you. I don't know if maybe Pastor Aaron or Pastor Ron has a word for you, but I just feel that there's somebody listening in who is seriously thinking of ending it all. And I just feel that God is speaking to you right now. Mm. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Pastor Aaron, do you have, uh, we thank you for being on here. And if there's anything you want to just add to that, please do that. We know that you've got to run here. Yeah. I, was, I was actually thinking about this today uh, while I was um, busy tidying the house. Um, that, um, especially in men, suicide is, is quite a, a, a high thing in yeah. men in their mid mid age and I just want to encourage you if you feel that that um, you've not done enough you're not good enough you're not earned enough you're not loved enough um, you are enough because God sees you as you are and loves you regardless of how you feel or think of yourself and I just want to encourage you lean into God lean into his love lean into his his grace his mercy his forgiveness and find true purpose that you are enough because he has adopted you as a son or daughter in him. And that's all you need to know. So don't take the pressures of this world uh, and the, the, the conditions of this world to mean whether or not you're good enough, you are good enough because Christ has qualified you. That's okay. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Aaron. Uh, Thank you so much for being with us and Pastor Ron. And I think we're trying to get Sister Jenny on camera here in just one moment. But (laughs) Sister Jenny, uh, we are ready for God to touch and heal you. And uh, we know that you and your husband, Ron, have served the Lord faithfully for so many years. And it is such a joy to see you, though, briefly on here. Would you just say hello to the folks that are watching, uh, whether they be in the UK, the United States, Canada, and other parts of the world? Would you just say a quick hello here? Can you say hello to everyone who's watching? Yes. God bless you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so um, Walter, you probably don't know this, but Pastor Ron and Jenny, they were also missionaries. They went to Cameroon. Was it Cameroon? Yeah. And they went to Jamaica. Oh. I know. Okay. And so I'm jealous. I'm waiting for the call to go to the West Indies. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so she, beat, she beat me to it. <laughs> I'm a lot older. He's got time. <laughs> Praise God! Well, so wonderful uh, to see all of you and to have you on the broadcast. And we will have to uh, have you back on with more time for you to share on here. And uh, I know Pastor Aaron has got to uh, go here. Uh, Pastor Ron, thank you for being on here and for sharing from the wealth of uh, information and experience. And Sister Jenny, even though it was just for a few minutes, thank you for coming on here and saying hello. And there are people all over the world. And I I see such a beautiful smile there. We prayed for you just before the broadcast started. And I sense (laughs) the Lord is already doing something in you. Praise God. (laughs) 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 Well, yes. So for your your viewers, we prayed for Jenny before, and uh, you can see you can see the smile on her face. So yeah. yes. praise God. Praise God. God is good. God is answering prayer. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you, um, Reverend. Reverend Oh my goodness, who is that young couple? <laughs> that must be, oh, that's Pastor Ron and Sister Jenny a few years back, a few months ago. Yes, okay. <laughs> well, praise God. Thank you all who have joined us. Please share this broadcast. It will be an encouragement to others. People need to hear what was said on this broadcast. And please share this. Uh, Please subscribe to my YouTube channel so that you would not miss one of these broadcasts. We've got a lot, uh, all of the prior broadcasts are on there if you want to go back and watch. And we please continue to pray for the United Kingdom. We had the special guest today from Manchester, United Kingdom, and we are so delighted that God is working in the United Kingdom. So thank you so much for joining us today and uh, join us tomorrow. To, uh, we will have Sister Marcia Labaki on here. We'll continue to pray for America and the nations and for needs. 
And remember, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. God bless you. Amen. Amen.